Hey guys, oh my voice sounds terrible. So I am travel training with Bo right now and we are timing with our exact stopwatch how long it takes him to get from school to the bus stop. Um, I'm just, I've got him. Hi. I don't know if you guys can see him, but he's just got to walk to the end of the street. And because the app says that it will take him nine minutes. He wants to know exactly. So um, he said, is that walking pace? Is it running pace? And I'm like, it's averaged. So he doesn't want to know the average. He wants to know. So we're in this little side street around the back of the school, just walking from school to the bus stop. Whoop, he just jumped over a puddle. So, um, yeah, this is the first step. Now we're not catching a bus today. We are just timing how long it takes for him to walk from um, school to the bus stop. Then next time, uh, when we get down to the bus stop that he would get off at to go home, we will time how long it takes him to walk from the bus stop to home. Once he has that, he will have all of the information that he needs. And then we'll do it actually together on a bus. Okay, we got an exact time from school, from school to the bus stop. So the recommended time was nine minutes. It took him four minutes. Um, but that was to the back of school. Now we have driven home and we are, he's walking home from the bus stop that he would be walking to. So we're timing that. And uh, then we will have an exact time because he's taking notes on that. I'm driving at walking speed with my hazards on next to him uh, and then yeah we'll um, one day hopefully in a nice day and we'll catch a bus together when he has a late start to school okay so we got our exact times um, I guess it makes sense why Bo really didn't want to take the recommended amount of time because, so if you go onto the PTV app, which we downloaded onto his phone, it said that it would take nine minutes to walk from the bus stop to where, to school. And it, only took him I think it was three minutes something and then it said that it was going to take him 11 minutes to walk uh, from the bus stop to home and it took him four minutes something but he's got the actual like four minutes and I think it was 47 seconds so now he knows exactly where the bus stops are he knows exactly where to walk to from home we can't do travel training home the problem is that the bus is on the other side of an extremely main road. Uh, service roads on both sides, plus four lanes, two one way with a median strip in the middle and another two. So for him, it's like four roads he has to cross and he's not confident. He's not even confident about crossing the regular road 
on the way um, when, when he actually does get home. So I don't know that he's going to be ever catching a bus home because there are no pedestrian lights and nowhere for him to cross and he's too scared to cross by himself, which I remember, I remember how that felt. Um, I think I would have been 11 or 12 when my mum wanted me to drop off a video at the video store. Oh, so old. Yes, drop off a video at the video store. And um, I, it was a busy road, only single lane traffic each way, but still busy. And, you know, I kept, she was just, God, lazy parents, seriously. My mother was your ultimate lazy parent. And she had she, the car pulled over. And I'd never crossed a um I'd never crossed a main road like that on my own. And she had the window wound down. You know, and I just couldn't judge the speed of the car. All the cars were going at 60 and it was fairly busy time, but I just couldn't judge the spaces and I couldn't judge because I, I didn't drive or anything like that. So yeah, and I kept, I wanted to go and not go and then I went to go and then she'd yell at me. She'd be saying, you know, go now, now, go. And I, you know, because I hesitated and then I would step out. She'd be like, no, no, don't. It was horrible. It was horrible. So I do know, I do know how he feels, you know, I'm not going to um, lie. So I don't think that uh, he will be catching buses home, but it will be really cool if he can start catching buses to school. So I think the next step, as I said, uh, we'll both uh, walk, walk, catch a bus, and then get him to school. And just leave it at that until he's more confident crossing the road. So, but it's a good, it's a huge, huge step. He's, trains are different because obviously you don't have to deal with, um, it, he, he, You've got your stations, you know, you know, you don't have to worry. You're standing. He doesn't really walk to the train station. So he's made, he's made that trip, but you can always walk with pedestrian lights for some reason, or there's always pedestrian lights out the front of some, of a train station it seems to be majoritively the way buses are unpredictable and if you don't get on the right way, you know, there's, they're not on tracks and you know, and what station and everything. So, um, yeah, it's, I think just because he has travel trained with a tram, sorry, with a train, they do not cross, you know, you can't imagine, oh, well, you can do it with a train. Well, you can do it with a bus. Well, you can do it with a tram. That's not how autism works. That's, you know, each one is independent of itself. So uh, it's each one needs its own training. So this is going to take a while, but it's good. We're on track.